We're back for five minutes with Bob, Bob Mover. He's going to tell us, a, a, what, are you, what are you going to tell us today, Bob? I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the little that I knew Bill Evans. I had a couple of experiences that were um, intense and profound and uh, brief encounters with Bill. So I would talk to him sometimes, but never at length. But I had, uh, I have a couple of stories I think are quite interesting about Bill. And uh, I loved Bill. I thought Bill was like a really brilliant and uh, wonderful musician. And I was fascinated by his music. And um, in 1970, um, 70, 71, I was in Boston. Um, Jackie Byard, I'd met Jackie in New York, and he brought me up to play a concert at Harvard University with him and Alan Dawson and Buell Neidlinger. And I did this Harvard University concert with Jackie. And then Jackie said, well, you know, why don't you come to the New England Conservatory and just hang out with me and you come to my classes. And I happened to have a friend living in New England Conservatory, going to New England Conservatory, who had a roommate that was never there. He was on the road. He came in for exams. So my friend said, look, I got an extra bed in the room. I said, that's great because we're in Jordan Hall. The practice rooms are open all night. So I was living, basically living in New England Conservatory, which is another story of my life. But the main thing is that at this time, a lot of the black cats were upset with the white guys um, just for even playing the music. It was, uh. some of the cats would make you feel that it wasn't yours. They'd say, look, man, you know, I got nothing against you, but you know, this is our stuff. And, and like, you know, you got your Mozart, you got your Beethoven, you got your Stravinsky even, but, but leave our stuff alone. You know, it's not, not your place to be playing this. And if they didn't say it directly, they sometimes gave you that feeling. Of course, this is not the majority of black people. This was a few. Uh, Martin Luther King had been assassinated in 1968. So we're still really dealing with a one or two years, year difference from that happening. And th that really did change the racial climate of, of yeah. the country and, I you agree. know, in jazz. So um, anyway, I was studying, uh, I thought maybe they're right. So I was um, taking, I was studying composition with Joe Maneri, Joseph Maneri and learning the Schoenberg harmony method. And I was trying to do, trying to do a piano reduction of a Mozart Sinfonia Concertante in E flat, the violin and viola. And I thought I might want to be a conductor because if these guys were right and maybe this was my music then maybe I, could, I should be a conductor. I knew I had to be a musician, but maybe I, I shouldn't be a jazz saxophone player. Maybe I should be a conductor. I don't know, I was, I was torn. So Bill Evans was appearing at the jazz workshop, Paul's Mall in Boston. And I just had this idea for two reasons to go meet Bill Evans. For one reason, because he was a white jazz musician who had crossed over into the black community and was playing, you know, I played with Miles and done that. And, uh, the other thing was I'd written a couple of tunes, my first compositions, uh, two especially, and I really had had Bill in mind on one of them, and the other one was just the tune I thought he might like it too. So I was wondering, as you have the audacity when you're 18, which you don't have when you're 30, to just go up and ask great people, by the way, could you listen to this thing that I wrote? You know, I don't think, can't imagine myself now at 68 even doing that, but I did it. So I went down to Paul's Mall Jazz Workshop, and I caught a set of Bill Evans, and between sets, I uh, grabbed Bill and I said, Mr. Evans, I'd really like to talk to you about something. And he, you know, uh, took me aside and he said, sure, what do you want to talk to me about? You know, he sat down actually with me at my table for a minute. And I said, I have this situation, you know, and I'm, I'm a white guy and I'm trying to play this music. And is it black music? Are they right? You know, here, you know, you, you play jazz and, you know, did, can you relate to this, this, this story? He said, oh, I have, I've had that all many times in my life. And he was really just this beautiful man. He was like an old friend. He was just all of a sudden, he was huh. very warm. And he said, oh man, you know, it's a, and he even chuckled, he even laughed a little bit. He said, oh yeah, that, that one. He said, yeah, I experienced that. And I knew, I read later, he had kind of gotten some of that on Miles Band and some other situations, you know. Right. He said, and of course, he said, I've got wonderful black friends. He said, but when I was in, in school in Louisiana, I thought I became a classical flute major. And I thought I would become a classical flautist like Jean-Pierre Rampal. Huh. He said, I was really thinking about that. He said, because of that very reason. He said, you know, I, I said, maybe they're right. Maybe it isn't my music and maybe this should be. He said, I was into the classical repertoire too. And I knew I had to be a musician just like you. So what, uh, I said, what'd you do? 
And what made you change your mind? What made you decide make the, finally make the move to become a jazz musician? And he had this pensive look on his face and he did it, he was silent for, you know, for, for, for 30 seconds or so at least. And then he said, I think it comes down to, you know, man, he had this New Jersey accent, you know, man, I think what it comes down to is the need to swing. <laughs> How much do you need to swing? He says, because classical music will fulfill a lot of a lot of things musically. I mean, you know, a lot of your musical desires. But there's just the thing that I guess what probably makes you real really be a jazz musician is this need to swing. You have to feel a need for it. The need to swing. The need to swing. Yeah. Which and would, I thought that would be the title of a good book. <laughs> It would be a good book, The Need to Swing. Need One to other part of the story is then I felt a little more confident with him. And I said, I'll go to the next place. And then he invited me over to his table. He said, would you like to right. sit with my wife, Ruth, and I? He said, and I sat with him. And he said, um, no, he didn't do it then. I'm sorry. I said, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like you to play these tunes of mine. I brought these tunes. And I just wanted to know if I could give them to you. You don't have to play them in front of me or anything. But if you could take them and maybe, you know, just write me about them. I left my address. You could tell me what you thought of them, but this and that. He said, oh, better than that. He said, tonight, I really can't do it. I'm a little under the weather. He said, but tomorrow night, he said, come back. And, you know, I'll make sure you get in. If you don't have the money, you can come as my guest. And he can sit at my table. And after the gig, I'll play your tunes. And so wow. he did. Huh. Man, the club cleared out. And at the end of the night, uh, Bill says, okay, let's go check, out, check your tunes out. So he took my tunes with the sheet music and he sat and he sight read my first two tunes. One was called Solidarity and the other one was called Glorious Tune, not wow. Glorious Step, but I had a friend named Gloria who was a friend of mine's mother and I wrote her a tune. And I thought he was really gonna like Glorious Step, uh, Solidarity a lot because that was a little waltz like bo boo dee da bo wo be bo bo be bo It was like one of those intervallic things and I thought it was pretty nice. And he said to me, uh, he said, well, this one shows some talent. He said, you know, I can see, you know, you've, you've, got, you've got a gift. He said, but this one. And uh, that was called Glorious. He went, bo bo be do do da bo dee ba da be dee do 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 be dee do dee do do da ba do da. He liked that one? He liked that one, which I didn't think he was going to like that much. You know, but he said, he said, now this one. He said, but the thing is that, you know, you copped out at this point. He said, I want to hear more at the end of the bridge. He said, you kind of made it like a, a short bridge. And it sounds like you lost your focus there for a second. I said, you know, I think, you know, I think I, I really have never been happy with that part of the song. He said, he said, yeah. So he said, you got a good, you know, a good three quarters of a tune there. He said, so go back and work on that. The other one is nice too. He said, but this one has really got something. That's, and, uh, that, that's an amazing story, Bob. And it, that's, you've had some you've had some amazing encounters with jazz greats. So um, I'd I'd like to end that story right there if we could. That's a pretty good one. And then we're going to get back together when we have some more time for the story on Chet Baker. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today. I think. Well, I think we've done a lot, you know. And that's I good. that's a great you know, that's a great good. story. Uh, so be sure to visit Bob Mover Academy. I, don't, I can't remember what the uh, I think it's BobMoverAcademy.com, is it? Academy, yeah. The 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 website is BobMoverAcademy.com. Um, the actual is Bob Mover Academy of Music, but the, in the website it's just Bob Mover Academy. And you know we've got um, wonderful teachers. I hired a whole bunch of my great friends like you, and also some other people like um, Dave Kukowski and Rick Margitza, and uh, you know Victor Victor Lewis and uh, Sounds Bill, good. Michael Carver, a whole bunch of great people. Ed Howard, there's Look, too many to mention, you know. Yeah, but they, can, they can visit. We're, I'm going to put a link in the I'll put a link in the bottom of the YouTube, and we're going to have another moment with Bob because I want to I want to hear the other story about Chet Baker. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a good thank one. You, thank Be you, Marshall. Be safe very out much. there. It was a pleasure.